Oh my gosh. Okay, please, please work this time because the last time that I tried to do a live, it did not work out. So um, first of all, as people are just coming in before I do an introduction, um, if you will let me know that you can hear me because we need to do a technical check first because if you can't hear me, then this is not going to work. <laughs> so um, good, things are fine. Okay, so let me know that you can hear me and then also if you can just tell me um, where you are watching from, what you are working on, if you're knitting or crocheting, or if you are cleaning your house or eating dinner, whatever you're doing, um, just let me know and I am going to be looking, it looks like I can see your comments. Good morning, everybody. And I'm gonna try to pull it up on my computer too so that I can scroll back through. Okay, you can hear me coming from the Netherlands. I don't know if you can hear that beep. That is my coffee maker. Come here, Toaster. And Toaster is joining us. I'm actually here in my living room right now. So let me get the video pulled up here on my computer and then I will do a proper introduction and we'll get started for real. So let's see, oh, perfect. Here we go. And all right. Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Natalie, and um, if you are new here or just like popped in, I am a knitter and a crocheter um, and a teacher by day. I've got um, a dog toaster who is behind camera right now, so this is live and happening, so he might start barking at any moment, and we'll just deal with it. Um, but I also am married, um, I have my husband, he is either asleep upstairs or tuning in, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm sitting here on my couch. I thought that would be fun today to just kind of be casual. I am in comfortable clothes. If it's morning for you, hopefully you're like hanging out in your pajamas, staying safe at home. I know there are people watching from um, other parts of the world too, and it's the evening, so Yay. Also, let me know what time it is as you're coming in. I love knowing where you're coming from, what time it is for you, and what you're working on right now. So I do have a knitting project with me. This is my, um, what is it called, Traveler's Loop. And it's this really cool garter stitch um, infinity scarf. And you probably have seen it if you've watched the latest podcast episode, which is 54. Um, but I'm not going to be knitting on it because I cannot talk and knit or like host and knit. I can talk and knit when I'm in knitting group, but not host and knit. So, all right, I'm gonna look here at the comments and see who is watching today. Okay, oh yay, Nora, you're here. Okay, um, let's see, standing by waiting. Oh, that's cool, I didn't know y'all could comment before. Could you see me before I started recording? <laughs> okay. Let's see, somebody coming in from the Netherlands, getting breakfast ready right now. Let's see, everyone's good morning from New Jersey, from Memphis, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, all cuddling with your puppy. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to get all of the comments here, but this is awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming in and joining. Before I get started on like questions, cause I'm just gonna kind of answer questions that I got on Instagram, but also please ask your questions in the thread. And if I miss them, pop them back in again, because sometimes the comments just go a little too fast and I can't see them. Um, but before I get started on that, I just want to say, I hope that everyone is, um, is doing well in the light of everything that's going on right now um, in our world. It's very, very, it can be very scary and um, produce a lot of anxiety. Um, for me, I am a teacher. I'm an elementary school teacher and tomorrow was supposed to be um, going back to school after spring break. And as of right now, we are not going back to school for another two weeks. So it's gonna be really, really interesting. I have always dreamed of getting to work from home, um, not teaching from home, but like working on my knitting and crochet business, Love and Stitches. So I think now is the time that I'm really gonna get to see if it's all that I wanted it to be, so we'll see. Um, I am gonna be working in some capacity um, with my job, but I just don't know what that's gonna look like yet. So it's kind of a day-by-day -day thing here. Um, so let me know how that's going for you, but I'm hoping that in all this craziness that knitting and crochet can be a constant for you. Um, I'm still planning to do all my regular videos on Tuesdays and my podcast on Thursdays um, throughout the next several weeks. 
um, and so on. Um, but just, I will be here as a constant for you. Um, I'm hoping that getting to kind of virtually have a little knit and crochet group is helpful in a time like this. And if you really like it, maybe we can make it a weekly thing for a while. I was thinking that I will probably switch times between morning and evening just to accommodate people from around the world in time zones. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Yes, trying to keep busy right now and do as many like routine and normal things as possible. So, okay. Let's see if I have any questions yet. And if not, I will go do some questions from Instagram. All right, somebody, oh, Kate is in the car. <laughs> Riding passenger oh, to Weatherford, knitting on a what the fade. Um, Kate, I cannot believe how much progress you have made. Kate just learned how to knit brioche like yesterday. And she's, I don't even know, a third of the way through her what the fade. That's crazy. She's knitting so fast. Okay, 4 p.m. in Germany. Hi from Virginia, I'm knitting on a sweater. Hi, Erica. It's already, okay, 16H, mm, so what, four o'clock? No, yes, four o'clock p.m. Working on the Airy sweater by Isabel Kramer, very cool. Central California, oh yeah, it's early there. It's only 8 a.m., good morning. Weaving in your scrubby ends, oh yay. I hope you enjoy them. Okay, oh, and somebody else from Germany. 4 p.m. in Germany, 11 a.m. here in Ontario. Good morning, working on your first sock. Oh, hey, Tia. She's in New York, Norway. We got people from all over. This is so exciting. Sarah, Chantal, Heather. Okay, guys, this is amazing. Oh, you learned brioche in December, Kate? Okay, well, that's good. I, I was doing, I'm working on a brioche shawl right now. If you like to do brioche and you're looking to kind of like step up your game. I cannot recommend this shawl more. I'm in the middle of a row. <laughs> but I am working on Golden Willow by Nick Graffiti, who is Leslie Ann Robinson. And here is the right side. So this has technically, I guess, six different brioche patterns because it's got five different textural ones. I just finished all of the texture. And then I just got started on just the two color brioche, which has increasing and decreasing. So this is all like very new for me. Um, so it's really fun, it's really exciting, constantly changing, but yes, if you are looking for an exciting brioche project, something to kind of keep your mind going and keep your interest, I would definitely recommend Golden Willow by Leslie Ann Robinson. If you have three colors of yarn at home in your stash, you can get to right away. It's perfect, it is so, so much fun. Okay. Here is a question that I found. And again, if I missed your question, don't be afraid to ask it again because it's just, I'm not trying to ignore you. It's just that I have missed it. So, all right, here's a question from Kimberly. When you make your socks, do you count rows before the heel or simply use, I think simply use a ruler? Okay, that's a really good question. So when I first started making socks, I did use a ruler because I didn't know, for, let's just say for myself and not even for other people, I didn't know how big to make my socks. So I think the very first time I made socks, I stood on a piece of paper and somebody traced my foot and I, I, then I think we marked like, maybe we measured two inches from the end of my toe. I was doing cuff down socks, so I already had a heel, I could try it on, um, I already had a heel in my sock. And so I did measure, I didn't use a sock ruler because when I knit socks it was like, uh, probably 12 years ago, and I don't really think that anyone had invented the sock ruler, like the rounded edge that you can actually put in your sock. So I just used a measuring tape, and I uh, measured, you know, measured my foot on the paper, measured um, the sock, and then knit from there. But now that I've knit tons and tons and tons of socks, I actually know what row count gets me um, the foot length that I need. So if I do socks the exact same with the with similar yarn so that I get a similar gauge, um, then I can just pretty much just knit a sock without trying it on or anything. Um, so for me, I wear a size sometimes seven and a half, but now more women's eight, because I guess my feet are growing. So I'm a size women's US eight, and I knit 65 rounds for my foot. So that doesn't include the heel, and that doesn't include the toe, but just stockinette plain foot knitting, 
65 rounds. And I can pretty much do that with most yarns and most sock patterns. And then I already, I make my sister and my mom and my mother-in-law socks and I know exactly how many rounds for each of them too. So like my sister is a, I think a 10 and so I do like 70, four rounds for her, I think, on the foot. I don't know, it's, it's all kind of just, I try to keep notes in my Ravelry page on, on the socks when I make them, because oftentimes, like I live in Texas and my family lives in Tennessee, so when I give them socks at Christmas, if I do see them, or if I mail them, I don't get to like interact with them, so they will tell me like, I really liked this sock, but it's just like a little too long. And so I'll go, okay, well, how many rounds did I do for that sock? Let me take, let me knock off a few for the next pair. And we just kind of go from there. I think socks, you're constantly developing your own sock recipe <laughs> and you're always trying to perfect it. I think that's completely okay. All right, lots of, I see, I see the word afraid and brioche in here. So let me get to the scroll back and then I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> okay, let's see what else. Good morning, everybody. Lots of people from Canada, someone from Florida, Atlanta, somebody crocheting. Okay, let's see. There's another press conference in an hour. Oh, okay. San Antonio, okay, where am I? Somebody's knitting a T. All right. Brioche is your favorite, Heather. Oh yes, I love brioche so much. I think I will have to do this more often, Linda. I am excited. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to get to questions here. I'm not really a fast reader. Okay, starting on socks. Oh, is Rebecca here? Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> the famous Rebecca or infamous Rebecca, which is what she likes to say. Okay, so I see somebody saying they knit their socks on not nine inch circulars. You've done magic loop before and two at a time, but you keep getting tight stitches where you change the needles. Okay, so when I am, when I am knitting anything on magic loop, I have like a little tip that I like to do and I, and I like to give people. Um, let me see if I can pull, I tried to pull on my knitting. This is another reason I wanted to sit on the couch because I have a basket where I keep all of my knitting and so I just dumped it on the couch. Okay, so when I am knitting anything in magic loop, um, most people say that they get ladders, like they get stitches that are, sorry, stitches that are too loose here, like right here. Um, so it's interesting that you say that your stitches are too tight. So maybe if they're too tight, you're, um, you're really trying not to have ladders, but maybe you have overcompensated just a little bit. So let me show you guys whether you have ladders or too tight stitches, what I do, and maybe it will help you. So. I'm going to start the next round here, or just the next needle. I'm gonna knit my first stitch and I'm not even gonna worry about the tension on it because if I pull it tight or if I keep it loose, it doesn't matter. It's the second stitch that matters because that's what's actually going to anchor it. So I'm gonna put my needle in here. I know you can't really see it, so just, just hear me. When I put my needle in for the second stitch, that's when I'm gonna give this one a little extra tug and I don't even really ever like stop and pull that hard. I just give it a little extra tug, knit that second stitch, and then I just carry on with my normal tension. So it's really that second stitch that really counts, that holds your tension on the first one. So maybe you don't pull quite as tight, but if you do have ladders, pull harder on that second stitch. I hope that that helps a little bit. I don't even know if that was a question, but there's my tip of the day. Okay. Oh, Gab, yeah, Rebecca, you are you just started a beautiful new top. It's called Respico, I think. Who is that by, Rebecca? It's it's really pretty. It's kind of like a, a I don't know if this is okay to say. It's kind of like a different kind of Tanya because it's like a boxy sweater with a with lace on the bottom, but completely different. Very very pretty. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Oh, you're knitting your first card again. That is so exciting. So somebody's knitting socks on double pointed needles, cubics in wood. Oh, cool, that's very, very awesome. Okay, Erica is saying she's so sad right now, canceling all of your travel stuff for DFW Fiberfest. It was gonna be your first time. So if you haven't heard already, um, and it probably doesn't come as much of a surprise in light of everything, but 
DFW Fiberfest has been canceled. Uh, it was supposed to be the first weekend in April, as it is every year. And it is the most, it is so much fun. It is like the, I can't say it's the best because I haven't been to all of the fiber festivals here. I know there's one in Houston in the summer, um, but it's my favorite. It's one I've been attending for um, several years. And so it's really, it's really disappointing that it's canceled, but it's even more disappointing because this was their 15th anniversary. And so it was going to be huge. It was going to be epic. It, it was a festival that was starting to get a lot of like attention nationwide. And so I think it was going to be really big and really special this year. So yeah, it's really, really sad um, that it got canceled, but it probably, or it is, I think for the best. But the hardest part is like all of these things getting canceled. It's not just like disappointment. It's also a lot of people's livelihood that are affected by that. So that's really scary. I've seen a lot of things out there about how you can still um, support people that were going to be vending or um, support the event itself because I believe that they still have to pay um, like all of the bills to, to rent the building, the huge convention center that they were in. Um, and having no revenue to do that is going to be, it's going to rely or what am I trying to say? It's going to fall back on the coordinators of the event and it's a nonprofit. So <clears throat> if you were going to attend Fiberfest, um, I think that it's a good, it could be um, something in your, if it's in your place to help and to donate money um, to Fiberfest, that would really, really help. And not just to, to Fiberfest, but anything that was going on in your area. Um, just be thinking about that, be thinking about them and in any way that you can help monetarily or just giving good thoughts and encouraging words. I think that that's going to go a long way um, in these next few weeks. Okay, I think I need a drink of coffee. Is anyone else drinking coffee? I'm like full on Hufflepuff today. I have my Hufflepuff sweatshirt. I have my Hufflepuff mug. This mug is from Polly Studios and they, they, are a regular vendor at Fiberfest. And so I am sad because I'm not gonna get my, my mug that I normally get, but I can totally go online and get one, I think. Ow, that's so hot, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I know everyone's like, everything that's getting canceled, it's like, yeah, it is what's the best, but it's still, it's such a bummer. And I think we're allowed to be disappointed. I think it's okay um, to be disappointed and you don't have to feel guilty about that at all. Uh, yeah, more things getting canceled, oh my goodness. Okay, hi, new people coming in. Make sure to tell me where you're coming from and what you're working on. And if you're in, if you're not in the United States, like what time it is where you are. So fun to hear. Oh, hey, Maddie. Yeah, donate your entry ticket to Fiberfest. I think that's a great idea because I don't know what the cost was, five or $10 to get into the um, vendor hall, but that's a great idea. Just if everyone that was planning to attend just gave like five or ten dollars, that would really help them a lot. Oh yes, people with coffee, I love it. And you're missing hockey, oh man. My husband Kent is so sad <laughs> with all of the sports just getting completely canceled and um, his job is sports media. So he's kind of like, what do we do? <laughs> so it's, cra it's crazy, this is a crazy, this is a crazy time. Okay. Any suggestions for both knit and crochet tension struggles, specifically being with two tight stitches? Um, that's really tough. I, I really am of the opinion that you shouldn't change the way that you knit or crochet um, unless it's bothering you. So it sounds like it is bothering you. Like if, if a lot of people want to knit or crochet a certain way because um, maybe they think it's going to be faster or they like the way that it looks or they feel clunky. So don't change the way that you're knitting or crocheting just for the sake of it. But if it is bothering you, you should definitely um, take some steps to change it. So I kind of go with like the start a new project, something very simple. And this is going to be like your new way to knit or a new way to crochet project because when you're changing the way that you're going to knit or crochet, one, it's not gonna be as pretty as your, your other stuff because you've, you've gotten that down. That tension is good. Um, but 
Two, you need to have one project that's consistent all the way through that you're doing that new thing. So start a small new project, maybe a dishcloth or a hat, um, and that's gonna be your project that you work on, let's say every day for like 15 minutes or 30 minutes, set your timer. I'm a huge timer person. <laughs> set your timer and you're like, all right, for this time in this project, I'm gonna be focusing on this. So if you're too tight, I mean, I don't, I don't really have any other suggestions than to say just practice making things a little bit looser. Don't hold so close, don't hold your yarn so close to the needles. Give it a little more slack. Um, if y'all have tips for this, pop them in here um, for, who, whose question was this? I'm sorry. Um, I completely lost it, but pop, pop that in there if you have any suggestions. But yeah, I would just say every single day, practice for a, a short amount of time and just gradually increase that time, but don't do it on a current project. You don't want to mess that up um, and just keep practicing. And eventually over time, um, you either will loosen up or you won't. And it's just the way that you knit and it's completely okay. If you can't like move your stitches at all, that's a problem. If you're in pain because your stitches are so tight, that's a problem. But if you just feel like you're a tight knitter and you have to go up a few needle sizes um, when you start a project, then I would say, it's okay, it's just the way that you knit, so don't worry about it. Okay, oh, that was Katie's question. So if you have suggestions for Katie, um, please put them in there. Oh, somebody's listening from Jamaica. Oh, that is super cool. Okay, Catherine from Portugal, 3 p.m., and you're weaving in ends. Okay, all right, girl. <laughs> uh, if you're like me, you don't love that, so it's time to get them done. Let's see. Mm -hmm. In Houston, working on Starflake. Oh, I love that. Okay, lots of chat here. Keep up the chat. Uh, oh, some, okay, Regina has a suggestion for Katie. She says her sister was a tight knitter when she was throwing the yarn, but when she learned Continental, it became better. So that's a suggestion, that's a good one. Um, and if you um, need to like learn another technique, go on YouTube, there's tons of videos out there. Practice is the only way to master tension. Yeah, unfortunately, that is true. Okay, so I'm gonna go to some of the questions that I got on Instagram, but don't stop putting questions into the chat. I am checking in on them. Somebody just checked in from Boston, working on two times tonal sweater. I haven't seen that one, but that sounds cool. Okay, let's do a question from Instagram. So these are like really, really tiny. <laughs> So they're kind of hard to see, but okay. How did you learn to knit and how do you improve yourself? Do you have any tips? Okay, you might have heard um, this story before, but I will try to tell it briefly. So I learned to knit when I was about 13 um, and I was a ballet dancer. And so I was at a intensive camp, I think in Houston, or maybe I was in Atlanta. I, I did one year in Atlanta and one year at the Houston Ballet um, in the summer, and I can't remember which year it was, but I was at this ballet camp and I saw this girl sitting outside of class knitting on, knitting on something. And at the time, it didn't register to me that she was knitting on something complicated because I didn't know anything about knitting. I think she was making a sleeve and it was like color work. Like she was doing very skilled <laughs> knitting. Um, but I just, I don't know what it was. I stopped and I talked to her. I thought it was just really interesting. And when I went home that summer, I asked my grandmother to teach me to knit because she knew how to knit. And it had been a really long time since she knew how to knit. And so all she did was cast on the stitches for me and she taught me the knit stitch and then maybe the purl stitch, but that was it. I didn't know how to cast on, I didn't know how to bind off. For about the next two years, I created my own ways to cast on. I think I think she might have taught me like that backwards loop cast on. Um, and so that's what I did, which if you've done that for like an entire length or width of a project, you know that that's really hard to knit off of. But I, I ended up over the next two years kind of knitting on and off this crazy pink and green um, Lion Brand homespun blanket. It was all these different squares with my crazy method of casting on. And then for binding off, I would just like cut the yarn um, like I have probably like 20 stitches on a square. I just cut the yarn, put it on a needle and like thread it through, or I'd like thread through a stitch, come around and thread through the next stitch, come around and thread through the next stitch. And that was what I did for like two years. <laughs> and um, 
So by that time, I was like 15 years old. And I don't know, something then changed for me. I think I got a book from the library. Um, and or no, I think my mom gifted me a book from like Michael's about knitting. And I remember it had this like Velcro cover on it. I've seen other people um, that learned to knit around that time that have this book too, but I can't remember what it's called. And I learned how to do things properly. I learned how to cast on with the knitted cast on. I didn't know long tail yet. That was like super modern and hip and fancy. Um, but I did learn how to do the knitted cast on. And it was harder to learn to knit before YouTube, definitely. So. When I'm saying I was 13, this was in, um, let's see if I can do some math. That was 15 years ago. So it would have been 2005. So 2005, before YouTube. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm learning to knit and I'm, I'm using a book, which was great. And um, then I learned you could go to the library, which was also awesome. And then this is, this is part of the story that I don't know if I've shared before. It's not like crazy or exciting, but my mom, my mom is a big part of this, I think, even though she's not a knitter, um, she was the one who gave me the book. Um, she was the one who was driving around one day and saw that there was a yarn shop, um, which was something I didn't even know existed. I thought that Michael's and Joann's were like the only places that carried yarn. And I think this was, a, this was probably also in, no, this was probably in like 2007. So like yarn stores in my mind were like popping up then because I learned about them. I'm sure they had been around for a long time, but the hand dyed industry was, was starting to emerge at that time, the hand painted yarns. But anyway, she found this yarn shop. And so myself and a friend, I think we were like 16, 15 or 16, um, one of my dance friends, we went to their knit night and we were the youngest people there and we just ate it up. We got to sit around the table with all these people. They were older than us and they were so cool. And they, we were knitting and they were knitting and we just like couldn't get enough. Like it felt like very like, oh, we're older and mature and we get to sit at this table with all these people knitting. It was really, really cool. And that was Bliss Yarns in Brentwood, Tennessee. And so about, I guess, not even a year after that, I stopped dancing, I, I got hurt and I was, just hanging out in Bliss Yarns a lot in the summertime. And I would just sit at the table and knit during the day, like kind of by myself with the employees. Um, I think that's when I started to learn to knit socks. Um, and I don't know, the rest is kind of history. I was just sitting there one day and the owner of the shop at the time um, came up to me and said that they were looking for somebody that could work a few days a week um, in the afternoons, which would be after school for me. And I, I went to school about, I don't know, five minutes away from the shop. And so they asked me if I would want to start working there. And when I was 16, so I, I said, um, yes, because I needed a job. My, my parents would not buy me a car. <laughs> this is way more information than you asked for. My parents would not buy me a car. Um, they said that I had to have a job for like, they, they said I had to get a job before they would um, help me buy a car. So they were going to help me buy a car and then I was going to, they were going to pay so much and I was going to pay for the rest of it, but I had to have a job. And so I ended up getting a job at the yarn store. And then of course, once I got the job, then I got the news I had to have the job for like three months before I could get the car. So I don't even know what we did. I don't even know how I got to work, but I started working at Bliss Yarns and that's when my skills, knitting skills really, um, picked up because I was having to keep up with everyone who was coming in. A lot of a lot of what Bliss Yarns is all about is customer service and building relationships. And anyone who came in, we were there willing to help them with their projects. Um, I don't know, it was just amazing. So I think being immersed into that world of knitting and crochet is what really helped me pick up my skills. And now you can be immersed in that world through social media, which is even cooler. You can learn about so many things, gain new skills from YouTube, but it definitely doesn't replace that in-person um, interaction, which is so cool. Anyway, I kind of answered that question, but I also went way off on a tangent there. So you got to learn a little extra today about me. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, I love all the, all the chatter in here. Lots of people talking about sweaters. Working at a yarn store is one of my dream jobs. It is, I would, I would hardly call it a job for two reasons. 
<laughs> one, because it's so much fun to work at a yarn store, and two, you're probably not gonna make that much money because you're gonna spend all of your money at the yarn store, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Job. <laughs> no, I, I, I really, really loved working at um, Bliss Yarns. I started there when I was 16. I worked after school. I think I worked after school like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I think that's what I did. And then um, eventually I worked in the summer. And then when I went off to college, I would come back in the summer and I would work there um, like kind of not full time, but like full days um, in the summer as much as I could. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Okay. Oh, thank you. My parents were so mean not getting me a car. Oh my gosh. So I'm the oldest of four children. And so um, I didn't get anything. Like everything was earned. Everything in life was earned. So I, I did think that that was very mean at the time, um, especially because I grew up in such an affluent area. Um, and so not only did I not get a car, but like other people were getting like BMWs. And so, I mean, that's, that's the teenage brain though. I think that all we see is things that we're not getting. Um, but now that I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser, I feel like my parents did me, um, did, did very well by me because now I like, I can work for things. Like if I want things, I will work for them very, very hard. So I think that they raised us, they raised us well. <laughs> um, my family is so cool. Thank you. I like my family too. Oh yeah, everyone pop in here. Um, how old were you when you learned to knit? I think that's always really fascinating to learn. And also just because you learned, um, like maybe you learned to knit 30 years ago, or maybe you learned to knit five years ago. Often it doesn't matter how long you've been knitting. Some people, I think that if you learn to knit only five years ago, sometimes you have all the same skills as someone who's been knitting for 30 years because of the age that we're in, where there's information out there and you can learn so quickly and so fast. So I think it's really fascinating to learn when people did knit. Um, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. Heather got a dirt bike for her 16th birthday. <laughs> I love that. Oh, Bethany got a VW bug with no heat. Oh my gosh. I would feel the same way. I would feel terrible if I didn't have a car with air conditioning because of growing up in Tennessee and then now living in Texas, like I would just, I don't know. I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't drive anywhere. All right, lots of people saying how long they've been knitting or when they started to, or knit or crochet. I always mean knit and crochet when I say knitting, so forgive me for that. Okay, let's see if there's another question on here and keep on telling me when you learned to knit or crochet. Okay, um, okay, I, okay, this made me laugh when I read this question. It's not a funny question, but <laughs> um, somebody asked, are you helical knitting anything? Yes, I am. I showed, if you were here at the very, very beginning, I showed my Traveler's Loop. This is a free pattern um, from Dawn Barker. And so if you wanna learn how to helical knit and you don't have a project currently going in the round, um, so you need a project that has at least two colors or two skeins that you're alternating and is in the round to helical knit. If you don't have one, you can start this. This is a garter stitch um, infinity loop scarf, free pattern, um, Traveler's Loop by Dawn Barker. So yes, I'm helical knitting something right now, but the part that made me laugh is um, <laughs> she's, she asked, can we have a helical cow and like a knit along? And so in my head, I was like, okay, we can only have a helical knit along if we call it the Gila cow. <laughs> like he, Gila, H-E-L-I, and then like capital K-A-L, because that just made me giggle because I love puns. So Gila Cal, let me know what you think. Do you wanna do a helical knitting <laughs> cal right now? It could be a really fun time. I would highly recommend this pattern because I think a lot of, a lot of people who do stash yarn probably have fingering weight single skeins, and hopefully you have two that you can put together. Mine's single ply, but it doesn't have to be. You can do whatever you want. So, Maybe I'll put a poll out on Instagram today, see if anyone wants to do a Gila cow, <laughs> because I just think that that sounds so funny. Okay. Okay, I like this question too. How do you decide when something is worthy of being casted on? Ooh, okay. 
I have changed my standards, I think. Oh, more people helical knitting, I love it. I have changed my standards for um, casting things on in the recent years because I think I've had a lot of finished products or projects or um, whips that I've decided that, I, that weren't worth it. So how do, I decide, how do I decide if something is worthy of being cast on? I think it has to meet two criteria for me. One, it has to be, I have to be excited about it and not just excited for like one moment, but I kind of, I tend to think about things for several days before I do cast them on. So I think that's the first criteria is being excited about it with sustained excitement that I'm still excited about it a few days later. And then um, the second one is it has to um, fit my, kind of like my wardrobe and my lifestyle. So there's a lot of sweaters and garments that are really, really cute and like fashion forward and fun. But I know as much as I think they're amazing and cute, I would not get a lot of use out of them. Anything for me, I, I'm currently looking at knitting a tank top. Um, I love tank tops, but for me, they have to be like really thick, wide straps so that I can wear regular garments underneath and not have to worry about anything. Like I won't wear halters, I won't wear skinny straps because I just know that I won't. Like I, as cute as they are, like I don't want to knit things that I'm not going to wear. Um, then also like with shawls, I've started to learn what kinds of shawl shapes that I just don't reach for, that I have in my closet and I'm just not reaching for them anymore. So if I see a pattern that's like super pretty and then I, I look at the shawl shape and know that it's not something that fits me, I'm okay letting that project go because there are a hundred other beautiful things out there that you can be working on. So I, I think my criteria have, have gotten honed in a little bit but hey I still make mistakes y'all saw um, you might have seen that I ripped out my um, centrifugal shawl and um, that was also because I was having a lot of problems but honestly by that point my heart wasn't in it anymore it was a lot of garter stitch and um, I don't know I was just it wasn't right for me at the moment I had too many other plain knitting things going on what I needed was something fun and something interesting and so that's why I cast this one on. Not saying that the centrifugal shawl is not interesting, but it was just a garter stitch shawl and I needed something that was a little more like looking at my pattern and thinking. So that's why I switched. So don't be afraid to, if you're not super into a pattern, just put it in your favorites. It can hang out for a little bit. It will be there later. <laughs> okay, let me see if I've missed anything. Um, questions, Helical, oh my gosh, you got it right. Okay, lots of people learn to knit 15 years, four years. Some people were like little little kids. I love that. Your grandmother's taught you. Um, that's so awesome. Okay. Started learning from books and now YouTube videos. Yeah, same. I'm still learning from YouTube videos. Okay. All right. Where did I get my sweatshirt? Okay. I got my sweatshirt... Um, at Universal Studios in California. <laughs> but I think you can get it, actually, my sister has the same one. So every single woman in my family is a Hufflepuff, um, which I think is really funny because when you first read the books, tell me you didn't not want to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> but now I feel like it's a very, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you're probably confused, so I won't talk about it for long. Um, but Hufflepuff is a house in um, Harry Potter, and I am a Hufflepuff per the quiz that I took online, so who really knows? Um, but I did get it at Universal Studios in California. I think my sister, who has the same sweatshirt, got hers at Universal Studios as well. So I'm not sure if it's a product. I'm, I'm sure they sell it online. Like, maybe try to Google Hufflepuff sweatshirt. It's got the... Um, it's got the crest on the side. It's a great sweatshirt. I love it. I have, have my sleeves cuffed so I can do real life things. Um, but yeah, that's where I got it from. I'm sure they have a shop online, just like Disney sells their merchandise online and in the stores, I'm sure they have it online. Okay, you love the pun Gila Cow. Okay, good. Let's just start using the hashtag Gila Cow, make K-A-L in all caps, and I think it will just be funny. <laughs> I love it. Okay. 
Uh, Kate has a question. After wearing your Tanya, how do you feel about it? Oh, that's a good question. I have worn it twice now. I wore two, one and a half times. I wore it for a full day when I was at the retreat um, and I really liked it. And then I wore it for my podcast. So I, I think I really like it. I definitely don't enjoy um, like a cropped sweater. I didn't make mine super cropped, like it's long. However, the lace does start at a place where I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing it without a tank top underneath, um, which is fine. So I, I like it. I think I'm gonna try it. I've only worn it with like jeans and a, and a tank top tucked in. Um, I think it will be cute with dresses. So I'm gonna have to try that now that the weather is getting warmer. Um, but so far so good. I don't think I'm gonna be taking it out or anything, but I do like it. Um, I like the sleeves that I did. I think now putting it on that if I had done, if I had had the yarn and I had made the sleeves for Tanya down to here, I think I would have liked that. Um, I just didn't have enough yarn. So I take back what I said about not wanting to knit the sleeves to here because of the proportions on my body. Um, I think it would have looked fine. The, f the flare on the lace is almost a little too much for me. That's the only thing. Um, because I'm like smaller and then much sig significantly larger, like I don't know what shape that is, I guess a pear. Um, I don't wanna over accentuate that. <laughs> so it fits me really, really well, but the flare is almost a little bit too much. It's kind of relaxed a little bit. I might even have to steam out the lace and let it drop a little bit more. But all in all, I love it. All right, people are saying what they are, Slytherins and Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs. I love it. My husband is a, is a Ravenclaw. He's very, very smart and superior about it. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, yes, Gryffindor. We got a Gryffindor here. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. That sounds good. Okay. Have I ever tried sewing? Oh, I have tried sewing. Um, I, I don't really um, enjoy sewing. Um, I used to... Um, when I was in high school, I would sew with this woman for like a full day, like 10 hours. And I think that really, really killed it for me. I used to knit for her. And then in exchange for that, I would go to her house, use her machines and sew. Like I made, uh, with her, very much her help, I made my sister, my sister and I used to share a room. Um, and so I made us duvet covers for our beds like I went and picked out the fabric and stuff and then I brought it to this woman's house and we sewed together she had a prof she was a professional um, seamstress or sewist and so she had all the machines in her own business and stuff and so we did a little exchange she could knit but she just sewed so much she didn't have a lot of time so I knit for her and then I would go sew so I think because of that it kind of killed sewing for me um, so I can like I have the, a very small amount of skill. Like if I needed to make a little purse lining or something, I could do it, but I've never made, um, <clears throat> I've never made garments on my own. She sewed some dresses for me um, with a little bit of my help, but yeah, I'm not into sewing. And I, and that's an unfortunate, I think, because now I feel like there's so many amazing uh, sewn garment patterns out there that I would love to wear, but I just, I don't have the interest and I think that's okay. If you're interested in sewing, you do it. If you're interested in knitting, do it. If you're interested in crochet, do it. But if you're not interested, like zero guilt. <laughs> like you just do, it's a hobby um, or so, for some people it's a livelihood, but do what you enjoy doing. I think that's 100% okay. And if I need something sewn, I know a lot of people who have sewing machines and who are good at it. So we could do a little skill trading <laughs> for sure. Okay, let's see. Ravenclaw move to be smart and superior about it. You know it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Sarah asks, what would you do if a coworker asks you to make something for them or for their child and you don't want to, what's the best way to politely decline? Okay, so I've definitely been asked this before and it's always gonna be awkward, I think, um, but stand your ground because you don't wanna start um, you don't want to do something for a coworker um, and then start like a trend where you feel like now you have to do it for everyone who asks you. 
So what I like to do um, for my coworkers and for my students, because I do have students ask me to knit them things, which is hilarious. It's a little easier to say this to a child, um, but if somebody asks me to make them something, I just say, oh, I don't, I don't do that, but I would be happy to teach you. So I don't make it like, I, don't, I won't do it for, like I don't try to make an excuse about like, um, maybe it's too, it costs too much to do it for somebody, or I don't know, I don't, I don't try to get into details. I just say like, I don't do that. Like that's not something that I do. But I say it really nicely in like a really nice tone. Like, oh yeah, you know what? That's not something that I do, but I would love to teach you. So you, you just draw the line, you do not do that. And then you would be happy to teach them if you are. Um, which I mean, if you have the time, I think that's great. And a lot of times people will say, okay, like I'm interested or no, I would rather not. And if they ask you, well, why don't you do that? You can say, well, I just knit for my family. And then stop talking. <laughs> like you don't have to go on and on about details. Like this is your policy. You don't knit for other people except for your family. That's what I tell my students and that's what I tell my coworkers. And so far, it, sometimes it takes people like a back. They're like, okay, but they just, it's okay. They, they don't know. You could have a hundred reasons for not wanting to make something. You want to make your own things and it's okay. You, it, like somebody couldn't pay you enough to make some of the things that people want. They don't understand the value of it. There's so many reasons, but you don't have to go into details. Just say like, that's just not something that I do, but I would love to teach you how to knit. That's my policy. That's what I say to people now. And it's hard. Actually, I had somebody yesterday, um, a friend, not a coworker, ask um, me to make them socks. And they said that they would, I said, oh, I don't know. She said, oh, but I'll, I'll pay you for it. And she's like, since they're handmade, like how about $10? <laughs> and I did not laugh. Do not laugh. Don't, don't make people feel bad. I did not laugh. And um, obviously $10 doesn't even cover the cost of sock yarn, but somebody that's a non-knitter has not a clue. Now this is, a, this is somebody that's so kind and so sweet and close enough to me that I would actually be happy to make them something as a gift. So that's what I said. I said, you know, um, $10 is not, is, doesn't quite, isn't quite covering it. I said, but I would really like to make socks for you as a gift. So that's what I am doing for this person because they're close to me, um, but yeah, it's really challenging. That's really, really hard. I think you need to stay, have your policies and stay strong. And I legit will practice. Like when I first started getting those questions, it was super awkward. And I said a lot of things that were like excuses or uncomfortable. So I started practicing what I was gonna say. And that helps a lot. Say less, that always helps. Okay, don't, somebody said say I'm too busy at this time. I would be careful because that implies that at another time you might be able to do it. Be careful. I don't do that. Oh, you hear Toaster? <laughs> Come here, Toaster. <laughs> yes, remember your worth. Time is valuable. Sell your handmade socks for $3. <sighs> it's okay. People don't know. It's okay. Okay, let's see. Um, more questions. Keep them coming in. I think we're at 48 minutes. So I, I feel like um, I'm going to try to stop us at an hour. I don't know if YouTube has a limit, so I'll try, probably try to stop us just before an hour. So we have about 10 more minutes. So let's see what other questions we can get in. Okay. Um, somebody asked, will I have a break from school? What am I doing in my extra time? So yes and no. I, we are not going back to school tomorrow. Um, However, I'm supposed to be working, but I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Um, so I am just waiting. It's a day by day thing. So I will try to keep you guys posted as much as as much as um, I can and as much as it is appropriate to share. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be working from home. So let's see how that goes. I'm I'm excited um, and also obviously anxious, as I'm sure a lot of people are feeling. So it'll be really, really interesting. OK. Um, am I using single ply yarns in my granny's scrap blanket? No, I have several um, scrappy blankets going on and I'm not using single ply yarns. 
Um, I guess I guess to me they just look different, um, but honestly, it's be, it's more because I just didn't have a lot of single ply scraps because I didn't have a lot of single ply projects. But now I do, so I might have to rethink that policy. Um, I have a hard time mixing plies just because I think they look different, like a single ply yarn like this one, which is probably not going to focus. There we go. Um, to me, even knitted up looks different than applied yarn like this sock yarn. So maybe I just need to get over that. Maybe that's a little too like OCD. <laughs> but I don't think that those yarns, while they will like pill a little bit more, I'm not going to be washing my scrappy blankets in the washing machine anyway because a lot of the yarn is um, wool that would felt. So maybe I, could, maybe I should be adding them in. I don't know. I'll have to try it. I do think they look different though and that's probably why. Um, best interchangeable needle set. Okay, what are your guys' favorite interchangeable needle sets? I've had my Knit Picks wooden harmony needles for years. And while I love them, there's, there's been some that have come out since then that I think are just a little better. Um, I used to have the Denise kit. Did anyone have the Denise one where it was like, I feel like it's like the, or not the original because I know like Boy and um, Susan Bates, I think they had their interchangeable kits out a long, long time ago. Um, but I had that Denise kit, oh my gosh. And the cords were like plastic, they were so thick. Um, but I used that for a long time, I did. And then I got my Knit Picks one and that's what I've been using. Um, but the only thing for me about Knit Picks, I like wooden needles and that's why I use them. I think needles are so personal. Um, but I have a hard time using the Knit Picks cords when I'm doing Magic Loop. So that's my only thing with them. My favorite needles for Magic Loop are Chai Goo Red Lace. And I know Chai Goo makes um, interchangeables and I think they make wooden. I use metal for anything that's a size two, one or two. Um, but other than that, I like to use wooden needles. So maybe that's what I need to do is I need a new, I mean, I don't need one, but eventually I would like to try out um, if Chaigu has wooden needles. I would be interested in that. Maybe I need to try that out. But uh, lots of people are putting in their favorite interchangeables. They do make wooden. Okay, good to know. Good to know. But my favorite, I think as, a, as an entry level, like you, you just started, um, Maybe you didn't like just start knitting, but you have made several projects and you're, you keep buying new fixed needles and you're ready to get it interchangeable. I think Knit Picks is just so affordable and they've got wooden and metal and do they still have the plastic, the acrylic ones? Those were pretty cool. Okay, yes, Heather, I see your question and I have it on here too. So let me do that one. Um, can I share some of the stretches that I learned? So. Um, last week when I went to the Knitting in the Hills retreat, I took a class called um, Healthy Hands and I did learn some stretches in there. Um, so I, I'm happy to share, but I feel like I need to give credit to the, um, the teachers. So let me think really quick. They are from Rag, Rag Line, I think I, th I think I said it wrong in my podcast, but Rag Line. Um, let me put it in here real quick. They have um, yoga and knitting retreats. So y'all should go look it up, Ragline Knits, and then their names were Kate and maybe Liza. Okay, I think that's right. I just typed that into the comments. Um, but they showed us a couple of really great things. A lot of it was um, using lacrosse ball and I actually recorded a video of me using my lacrosse ball um, with exercises that I have learned over the years and some of them we even did in their class. So that should be coming out probably next week if you're interested. But some of the stretches that we did, so we did a warm up where we literally like rubbed our hands together like before you start knitting, warm up your hands. So we just went like this for like 30 seconds. Um, and then what else did we do? We did a lot of, um, like using your hands, like pressing for a few seconds with each finger and then going back through. Um, we did neck stretches, which um, I love. My neck is always so tight. So we did a lot of like neck rolls and something that's very important when you're doing a neck roll, it's gonna get louder when I do this, sorry. Neck roll is when you go back, don't think about throwing your head back. Think about 
pulling your chin up to the sky. It gives you more of a stretch in your um, neck and it doesn't make you like crunch your neck as much. So, you know, you roll around, you're stretching the sides and back of your neck, but when you go back, don't think about tilting your head back. Think about pulling your chin up and that really helps a lot with your neck. Um, we did stretches, you know, twisting our back and stuff. Um, we did one that I cannot show you like how I am, but if you put your palms flat on a table and then you stretch all the way out so you're arms are straight, you're, you're basically making an L shape with your body, your arms and back are straight like flat and your feet are flat on the floor and you're stretching out, out, out. That felt really good. Um, eventually I wanna get a yoga belt and I can show you how we tied things so that your shoulders are pulled back. They suggested doing that for 30 minutes of knitting time every day and eventually like your, you'll get stretched out but also your um, muscles will kind of learn to grow and support that. That was the coolest one to me. I love that. So there's just a few, um, a few of the things that we learned, but definitely go to Ragline Knits. Maybe I haven't explored their site, but I'm assuming they've got a site and some different tips on there. Okay, let's see. Oh, people love their Zing needles. Yeah, Zings are awesome. Okay, Chaigu. Oh, Chaigu wooden interchangeable tips will work on the red. Yes, that's awesome. Red cable is different from a lot of their other cable. Yes, totally. The red lace is different. Okay. Um, someone asked, what would I do if I'm really close to finishing a project, but I'm not 100% happy with my colors? Um, if I'm really close to finishing, I might actually finish it and give it to somebody else if I don't like the colors. Um, but if, but I'm starting, I feel like I'm starting to know myself better and hopefully I wouldn't get as close to the end of a project if I didn't like the colors together. Like these I was really unsure of and then I did a swatch in the class and I loved them. So I think I'm, I'm starting to do more like swatching and preparing for projects so that I'm not running into those circumstances. But if I'm like really close, like a couple days from finishing, I might just finish it and give it away. If I really don't like the colors, but I really love the yarn, I might just take it out. It's hard, but you have to think about what do you really want? Do you want the, do you want the yarn? Do you want the finished product? Do you just need it in a different color? It's a hard choice to make. Okay, and then this is the last question I have on here. Tips for what? Oh, no, it's not. I missed a lot of questions. I forgot I had a few more pages of screenshots. Uh, I'm going to save that one then. Let me see if there's anything else really different. How long have I been a teacher? I can answer that really quickly. This is my sixth year teaching. Six years. And when I started, I never thought I would get make it to six years, but here I am. Um, what's my next sweater knit? I don't know. I'm looking at tank tops right now. Cotton tank tops. Easy pr beginner projects. Always things that are flat and square or rectangular. So scarves, um, blankets, but on a small scale dishcloths. And then I think switching into things in the round like hats are a really great way to progress. Um, let's see. Picking up wraps, that's definitely something I think I feel like I need to show. Okay, I think I got most of those things. Sarah, I think you had another question on here. Nope, this was somebody else. Tips for washing knit garments. I like to use soak. What do you guys use? I use soak and um, usually cold water. And then my biggest tip for washing garments is be very, very careful when you take them out of the water. Like I do it in my sink in a tub and then right next to it on the counter I have a towel and I pick it up and I squeeze out as much of the water as I can without letting any part of the garment like droop down and stretch. And then I put it on that towel, roll it up and then stomp on it on the floor to get all of the excess water out. So that's my best tip for washing garments. Okay, yeah, you said posture and I'm like, all right, sit up straighter. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and get them in. We're coming into, I don't, I don't think YouTube is gonna cut us off, but just in case it does in the next 45 seconds, I'm gonna start wrapping up here. Um, I had so much fun. I, I feel like 
Um, I can't believe that I just talked for an hour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I am gonna be trying to get this video up afterwards for anyone that missed part of it or all of it. Um, if you really enjoyed this and you want to do it again, um, will you let me know? Um, you can comment on this video or, um, I don't know, I'm on Instagram at Nitty Natty. Um, but if you want to do this again, I'm thinking especially in this time, maybe a weekly virtual knitting group is something that would be really great. I know it would be great for me, for me, so maybe it would be great for you guys too. Let's see if it cuts me off here. Nope, we're over an hour, okay. But I'm still gonna be wrapping things up. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, today. This is my first YouTube live video. Woohoo! Um, I feel like it went well. I really, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. I have, as you can, as you can tell, I love to talk. <laughs> I have so many things to talk and share about and I love answering your questions. Um, so if you are interested, let's do it again. I'm going to um, be switching between mornings and evenings just because I want to accommodate as many people as possible um, here in the United States and Canada and around the world. So I think the next time will probably either be a Friday or Saturday evening at 6 p.m. because that would mean for people in um, in Europe, not a great time for you guys. I know it's really not a great time, but for people like in Australia, um, it puts them into like midday, so it is a good time for them. So I think I'm just gonna switch back and forth. It won't always be the best time for you, but I hope that that's okay, trying to accommodate as many people as I can. Um, I see lots of people saying, I love that you loved it and you would do it again. So yeah, thank you. That is very encouraging for me, and um, thank you so much. Um, yes, everyone stay healthy and knit. <laughs> I wanna see all of your projects. Um, if you're interested in doing a helical, I'll, uh, later today, I'll try to get something up on Instagram stories and see if anyone is interested. That sounds like fun. The grocery girls go way over an hour. Yeah, you're right. You know what? I was watching them, was it yesterday? And they did go over an hour. So yay for YouTube letting us talk for so long. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that the rest of your day is um, just good and that you can find some peace in yarn and <laughs> staying at home. I am going to be doing a lot of cleaning today because um, yeah, we've got some stuff coming up in our life that's unrelated to the madness that is going on. So I need to get our house cleaned and ready for that. So if you are following my Instagram stories today, you're probably gonna see a lot of cleaning. So if you need some cleaning motivation, come over to Instagram, I got you. All right. I will be doing this again soon, in a week or less. So watch out on Instagram, I will post on there. Okay guys, thanks so much, happy knitting, and I will see you next time, bye. Now I have to figure out how to, how to end this. I think it's the X, bye guys. <laughs>